Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Of Watch Central. Today we're sitting down with streamer and Canada coach Jane to talk about some of the big mistakes that he sees out of all sorts of different players at different tiers. These mistakes apply to everybody, so do let us know what you think in the comments below. Like this video and do check out Jane on all of his platforms in the description below. But let's get started. So Jane, you have a lot of like mistakes that you really want people to stop. There is a sort of theme between all of them, but first and foremost, what is like one of the main tips that you want people to stop doing? <laughs> well, the first tip that I see so very commonly and you know, primarily in gold and platinum where the vast amount of Overwatch players are is over ulting. And you see this very commonly from high skill heroes for people, you know, Genji, you know, we always joke about the pro Genji, but he's by far the worst offender for this. Where if a Genji, for example, gets two kills and he has his Dragon Blade, he sees, you know, that there's four targets and they're all lined up perfectly at like one HP. And if he pulls out his Dragon Blade, he can get the full 6k. By golly, he's going to go for it. But if you're talking about in terms of actually from a strategic objective, just getting those two kills in the first place should have been enough for you to actually win the fight in its on its own. And that even without ultimates, your team should, should, uh, not always, things happen, should be able to win a 6v4. So one of the key things that happens in lower elos is that ultimates only come out after one team has already gained the advantage. So this is bad for two reasons. First of all, the attacking team shouldn't need more ultimates if they are going to win anywhere if they already have the advantage. And the defending team shouldn't be using their ultimates because the chance of that ultimate actually, um, for example, the chance of an ultimate in a 4v6 situation, getting value equivalent to having lost two members is very poor. So it's very, very rare that an ultimate will bring it back to even, let alone be valuable enough to put you in the advantage when you're in a 4v6 situation. So as a general rule, you should be using ultimates to gain advantage or to prevent your team from losing the advantage, not to try and just decimate the remainder of the team or delay the inevitable team fight loss that is about to occur. So it varies for hero to hero, but when do you will in a situation? When do you sniff that opportunity to press Q? You always want to be uh, engaging first on your opponent, even when you're on defense, right? So if you're playing Genji and you have your Dragon Blade and you're on defense, then what you want to be doing is making sure that you are using your ultimates on the opponent even though you're on defense. Whether that's based on an opponent making a mistake or whether it's just simply you're ready for them to push through in a certain location on the map. If you ult on the opponent, that gives you the higher chance of being successful and turning the fight in your favor. Even if you only get one kill with your Dragon Blade, that's all that's necessary to give your team the advantage and they have a much higher likelihood of actually winning the fight as a whole without the assistance of ultimates from there on. So being proactive instead of reactive. Proactive instead of reactive. And if you've already won the fight, don't ult to get play of the game. It's going to look damn cool at the end of the game, but strategically, it's a waste. What is next on the list of mistakes that you think people should really stop doing after almost like three years of the game? <laughs> well, I'd really like people to have a little bit better knowledge of how to recontest a hybrid point. Um, so on hybrid, we're talking things like Hollywood, Numbani, and King's Row in particular. A lot of people, if they are on the defense and they lose one, they stand firm and they try and defend in a 6v5 situation. But statistics have shown us that trying to win a 6v5 will have a much lower chance of being successful. So a lot of people try and, and prevent the opponent from getting any tick on the point. There are three ticks, right? 33, 66, and then 100% of the capture. So a lot of uh, defender, defending teams, if they lose one, will try and stay on the point and fight at a disadvantage, and then they'll get wiped, and then the opponent will get all three stick, all three ticks of the point. However, what a more organized team will do is if they lose one, they will back off and be as defensive as possible, where the opponents, if they wanted to kill them, would have to not go onto the point, but past the point in order to take that fight. They'll wait for their sixth member to respawn and rejoin them. And then even if the attackers took two ticks, the attackers will, sorry, the defenders will push back onto the point they're defending with six to have a better chance of actually winning that fight. This will also give the, uh, or force the attackers to be in the open and out of their defensive locations, be on the point where they are more exposed and have less options to retreat. So if you do lose one and you have the option, back off the point, wait for your sixth member to regroup with you, and then push back in even if you had to give up two ticks. 
So that sounds pretty straightforward in practice, but what, where's the mistake there? Like, what are people doing wrong in this situation that they're not recontesting a hybrid point as well as what you've just described? Well, no, most teams just simply hold in their same locations regardless of one of their teammates dying. And they simply try and hold firm and hold out for as long as possible until their sixth man kind of staggers back. But normally what happens, uh, especially in the lower ranks, is that if you do lose one, then trying to hold the line as you will will in result in one of your other members dying. And then you just reach this very prolonged stagger in which you don't have the opportunity to regroup and recontest as a whole team. So unless, uh, unless some sort of map control is extremely important to your composition, for example, snipers, then it is better to back off, wait for six, and attack together. It will always be stronger and will be very powerful at the lower ranks. So mistake number three, Jane, is putting three people on the payload as you're moving it. But Jane, surely that's the fastest way of getting a payload to the objective, right? <laughs> Why is it bad to put three people on it? This is this is actually a little bit of a mind bender, this one. A lot of people will probably be like, what? But uh, yeah, actually putting three people on the payload in a lot of situations can actually be a mistake. And uh, it's easier to kind of demonstrate this, I suppose, when you actually figure out what the movement speed percentages are when you have one person, two people, three people on the payload. And if we assume that having one person on the payload is 100% move speed, having two people on, what do you think it is? 150%, 200%? No, it's 116%. It is only 16% faster to have that second person on the payload. Three people on? 133%. So the first, having one person on the payload is basically 75% as effective as having all three people on the payload. So one of the things you can actually do is only put one person on the payload and then move your entire team ahead of the payload, taking their locations, you know, high ground locations, holding choke points that are ahead of the payload, in which the opponents will have to fight in that location. And if your individual who is on the payload has a longer sight line or the ability to fight from range, like a Zenyatta, for example, 40 meters for his orbs, um, then you can have the fight occurring in front of the payload, whereas your payload pusher is still participating in the fight. And the payload, even if you lose that fight, you've caused the fight to happen in front of the payload. So while losing the fight, the payload is still moving forward. But if you have three people on the payload, you give up that map control, you allow the opponents to get into the high ground locations, and then they can use that to fight you on the payload, whereas even if you win, it wouldn't have been as far forward had you played forward with only one on the point. So let's talk a little bit about 2CP, one of the more hated game modes within Overwatch, because attacking the final point can be somewhat complex a lot of the time and it's really difficult. What kind of tips or mistakes do you see when it comes to attacking point B on 2CP? It's another kind of hidden mechanic on 2CP here in that a lot of people don't realize that there is actually a way for you to delay the opponent's respawns, the defender's respawns that is. Everybody knows that in overtime, uh, defenders will have delayed respawns. However, 2CP has a mechanic where if you have more attackers, on the point than defenders, then the defender's respawns will be slowly increasing in duration. And this actually goes on until 75 seconds this advantage has been held. So this can happen over quite the duration of time. Um, so for especially, especially on maps like Hanamura, for example, where high ground is very, very beneficial to the attackers, it can happen where um, by merit of holding that high ground in order to give you better, better kind of sightline and effectiveness onto the people who are trickling onto the point, if you only have like one person on the point ticking it up, not only are you going to be uh, getting that percentage capture slower, but you only gain the delay on the defender's response if you have more attackers on the point than you have defenders. So if you have two people on the point attacking and they have one defender, then their respawn, their respawn timers are growing longer and longer in duration. However, if you have two on and they have two on, it's even. And if they have more defenders, then the respawns will be heading back down towards 10 seconds. So um, basically, make sure that you are aware that having more people on the point on 2CP will actually slow down the respawns of the defenders. So we've spoken about hybrid, we've spoken about pure escort and now 2CP. Surely you've got some great tips for control as well. 
Well, there's always the kind of or the question on control about whether you actually try and fight a losing fight. Maybe you try and stall out to get a few more percentages, because is, you know, 2% extra on the control point worth a Diva Max worth of ult charge? And these decisions are very difficult to make. But if you're going to remember anything about control, remember the number, mag or the magic 85%. And 85% on most maps, you know, all maps are slightly different, but 85% is generally considered the number at which if the opponent uh, takes a point from you past 85%, that is their final fight. So if you got, if you kind of captured the point first, and then it, the, the progress was ticking up, and if the opponent takes it from you at 86%, if you take it back, they will not have an ability to get a second fight. They may be able to stagger onto the point, but they will not have the ability to regroup as six. So if you're ever trying to stall it out before you lose and you're throwing one person on a point at a time, there's no way you're gonna win the fight. You just wanna control the point for as long as possible. If you're past 85%, don't try and delay the point any further. If you're at like 82%, try and get to that 85. So past 85% capture, an opponent will not have an attempt or an, a second attempt to recontest if they lose their next fight. Below 85%, they will. So, win staggering and trying to get as just as much control percentage as possible. Remember that 85% as well. You can also use it to kind of change how you're defending. Where if the opponents are at 86% to their capture and you're on defense, then you know that if you lose this fight, you're not going to have the ability to have a second one. Unless, of course, you have a Lucio which does change things slightly, but I'll leave that to people to figure out. <laughs> so there's five solid sort of mistakes or tips to help alleviate some of the mistakes that you see. Any final things that you want to sort of give us before we go? And finally, where can people find more from you? Yeah, I suppose my last generic tip is if you are ever playing ranked and you know, for example, if this video does inspire you to try out uh, ranked, just remember that not all games are winnable. So. Take your losses in stride, keep grinding, keep improving, and just try and enjoy the process as much as you po as much as you possibly can, because Overwatch is a fun game, despite what everyone might say. Uh, my name is Jane. I'm professional Overwatch coach for Team Canada this year during the World Cup, and I also stream on twitch.tv slash Jane. That's J-A-Y-N-E. I hope you enjoyed my tips. For many more, come on and check me out on Twitch. I'll be glad to see you. Thanks for the invite, Ryan. I had a lot of fun. And that's it for this time. Thank you very much for watching. Again, big thanks to Jane for this video. You can check out all of Jane's stuff in the description below. If you have any of your own mistakes, do put them down in the comments below. Like and subscribe really helps out the channel. And until next time, take care. We'll see you then. <laughs>